Nucleophilic substitution reaction, as the name implies, that is a kind of substitution reaction where you replace one group from your compound with another group. And because it's called nucleophilic, then the group that is replaced and the group that is um, actually the newly formed group are both nucleophiles. So the species that attacks the compound and to form a new one is called a nucleophile, must be a nucleophile and it's simply a simple substitution reaction. So the general picture of this kind of reaction, you must have a nucleophile, and a nucleophile is any species or any compound that is a source of electrons. This source can either be through a negative charge or simply a lone pair of electrons. So this is called a nucleophile. And then you have your substrate where the reaction will take place, and the substrate must have a polar bond. And this polar bond here is between the carbon and the X. And this X can be anything. It can be a hydroxyl group. It can be a, hal um, a halide. So it can be um, as long as this is a polar uh, bond. Um, the best um, substrate for this kind of reaction is um, simply the alkyl halides. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't mean that um, alcohol cannot undergo substitution because we know that um, uh, alkyl halide are prepared by substitution, nucleophilic substitution uh, reaction with alcohols. So um, simply, the, you have this polar um, uh, polar group here. You have this polar bond here, where the X that is going to leave is called the leaving group. So we have a leaving group as well, and the carbon here with in this bond where the displacement will take place is called an electrophile. So you have an electrophile, you have a nucleophile, and you have a leaving group. The product you get here, you will substitute the X with the nucleophile. So this is the product of the reaction. Some examples of nucleophilic substitution reaction is a reaction between methyl chloride and hydroxyl ions. So this hydroxyl uh, group is um, basically the nucleophile and it's a nucleophile with a negative charge. And the CCL here is the bond that is going to be broken. So the chloride is the leaving group. And this is your electrophile. So you will end up with methanol and chloride. Ethyl iodide with a methoxide ion. Again, this is the electrophile leaving group. And this is the nucleophile. We will end up with an ether and the iodide. If we have this bromide with iodide, although both of them are actually a halide, but one halide can substitute another. So they will be substituted. So you're going to end up with iodide and the bromide ion. Cyanide as well can act as um, a nucleophile. So the cyanide can replace this iodide to give you the cyano compound and then the iodide. So all with this. These, all of these are called nucleophiles, and these we will have the electrophile on this side, and these are the substitution product. So there are two types of nucleophilic substitution reactions. The first one is called SN2 or pi molecular sun nucleophilic substitution. The other one is called SN1 or, one or unimolecular nucleophilic substitution. So what is the difference between these two? First, let's look at the kinetic of the reaction. So an SN2 or bimolecular nucleophilic substitution, as the name implies, it depends on both the leaving the, um, uh, the substrate and the nucleophile. So the rate of the reaction will depend on the uh, substrate concentration and the nucleophile. You need a strong nucleophile for this type of reaction in order to take place. And also, you, uh, need, um, a, a, you need a good concentration of both of them for their action to proceed. The higher the concentration of the substrate and the nucleophile, the higher will be the rate of the reaction. So the reaction depends on both of them. So the rate here, we call it second order, second order because it depends on both the substrate and the nucleophile. So let's look at the mechanism of nucleophilic substitution reaction and why the rate depends on the concentration of both. So the mechanism, because it's uh, bimolecular, uh, the mechanism will, um, will take place in one step. 
That means the nucleophile here, which is an OH, will attack the electrophilic carbon here at the same time while the chloride, which is the leaving group, is leaving. This doesn't happen just like that, but it happens even through a transition state. So there is a transition state here in the middle where the OH start to make a bond and the chloride start to break its bond. So there is a part of the bond here and part of the bond there. So this, as this approaches and start to make the bond, the chloride starts to break its bond. Eventually you will end up with your product. Notice that here for this type of reactant, reaction, the attack of the nucleophile is backside attack or the displacement is backside displacement, which means that the OH has to be on the opposite side of the chloride in order for this reaction to take place. Again, that means the OH has only one position where it can attack this carbon. And that means that the product which we get, the OH will have a certain relative position compared to the other groups. So if you start, as a stereochemistry now, when we talked about isomers, if you start with some alkyl, um, um, uh, sorry, alkyl halide that have that is chiral that has four different groups, like the one we talked about before, for example. So a one like this one, and you have the OH. So the OH must attack on the opposite side. The chlor will leave on this side, and the OH will attack on that side. So it has to be on the opposite side. So arrangement of the group here will be different in comparison with the first one. So if you start um, your compound uh, with an R isomer, you're gonna end up with an S isomer. There is an inversion of configuration for the bimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction because the attack will take place on the opposite side. So now the relative arrangement of the groups when we give them priority will be different. So if it's an R, you're going to end up with an S. And if you start with an S, you're going to end up with an R. So let's look at the um, reaction profile, the energy, energy profile for this reaction. So you start with your starting compound, the substrate. The, uh, here it's an alkyl halide and the hydroxide ion. They, we start at a certain energy level and as the, um, um, the nucleophile starts to attack, the electrophile and the leaving group start to leave, we, uh, uh, we reach the transition state, which is um, a high energy state and this step is the slow step or the rate determining determining step for the reaction this is why the this uh, the reaction kinetic for a nucleophilic substitution reaction the bimolecular is in two depends on the concentration of both the substrate and the nucleophile because the rate determining step will depend on both of them. As this approaches, this is leaving. So it will involve both components of the reaction. So this is why the kinetic here is by a second order. And then as the reaction proceeds, this bond will break completely and this will, bond will completely form and we will end up with our product and the bromide. So the energy of the products must be lower than the energy of the starter of the reaction or the substrate otherwise it will not be formed so any um, kinetic reaction we must end up with something that has lower energy <clears throat> again as we said that the stereochemistry there will be inversion of uh, configuration so the sn2 is stereospecific. We say stereospecific because it will give you only one stereo isomer. So if you start with an R isomer, it will give you an S isomer. If you start with an S isomer, you will end up with an R isomer. An example of that, if you start a reaction between the S2 bromooctane with uh, sodium hydroxide in ethanol water, so your um, uh, nucleophile here is the hydro uh, hydroxyl group in sodium hydroxide, and it will attack backside, so it will attack from here, 
And you, if you make arrangement of the group now, you see the OH on this side now, this group here and the methyl group is in this position. So the hexyl here and the methyl on this position. That means for this chiral carbon now, if you make the, um, uh, if you give them priority number, this is one, this is going to be two, and this is three. If you look at the arrangement, this is an R. But for this, the first one, the substrate, the bromide is one, this is two, and this is three. The arrangement is on the uh, anticlockwise, so this is an S. So you started with an S and you ended up with an R. So this is why we call the SN2 stereospecific and it causes inversion of configuration. So it give, gives you only one stereoisomer. So what about the other type of nucleophilic substitution, which is SN1 or unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction? <clears throat> nucleophilic substitution reaction, the, um, uh, the other type, the uh, unimolecular, um, the mechanism here will depend only on the concentration of the substrate. So the concentration of the nucleophile doesn't actually matter at all. So it's a first order reaction. The mechanism depends only on the concentration of the substrate. It's first order. Stereochemistry, it causes racemization. Racemization means if you start off with one isomer, whether it's an S or an R, you will end up with a mixture of both S and R of the products, and um, which is different from the bimolecular, and we will explain why. Um, the third uh, thing about nucleo the SN1 is that it's accelerated with better leaving group. So the better the leaving group you have in this reaction, the faster will be the reaction. Also, um, it, um, um, it can work well with weak nucleophiles, which is different from the uh, SN2. So SN1 does not depend at all on the nucleophile. So even weak nucleophiles can react in this kind of reaction. This is unlike the SN2. SN2 needs a strong nucleophile because this is the first step in the reaction where the attack takes place. So all of these observations are inconsistent with the observations for the SN2 mechanism. So let's have a look at the mechanism of the SN1 to understand why it behaves differently. So the SN1 uh, mechanism takes place in um, take um, uh, in two or three steps depending on the nucleophile. So if you have a nucleophile with a negative charge, then it will take place only in two steps. If you have a nucleophile with a lone pair of electron not negative charge, then we will need an extra step. So let's have a look at these steps. So if we have something like tertiary butyl bromide here, okay, with a reaction with water to give tertiary butyl alcohol. How will the reaction proceed? So the first step here will be the situation of the alkyl halide to form carbocation. So the first step in the reaction will the bond here between the carbon and the bromide will break. And this is the slow step of the reaction. This is the rate determining step of the reaction. So now we can end up with tertiary butyl cation where the uh, carbon ha here will have a positive charge and we will have a bromide ion. The nucleophile hasn't um, been involved in the reaction at all so far. So this is the slow step. Once this carbocation is formed, then the reaction can proceed very quickly. This is why the rate of the reaction depends only on the concentration of the substrate. It doesn't depend on the concentration of the uh, nucleophile. And this is also why um, better leaving groups is needed for this kind of reaction. Because the first step is the break of this bond between the, um, the leaving group and the carbon to make the carbocation. So now, once this carbocation is formed, there will be the second step, which is the nucleophilic attack by the by water, which is the nucleophile here. So this carbocation that has been formed is actually uh, different in its configuration or in its shape than the original uh, alkyl halide. So the carbon here is an sp3 carbon, as we know. 
the carbon in the carbocation here is going to change its configuration and it will become an sp2 carbon so now if you have a carbon that is an sp2 that mean that that means it's now a planar compound you're going to have a p orbital which is a vacant orbital with a positive charge once you have this planar compound and you have your nucleophile here whether it's a negative charge or with a lone pair of electron then the nucleophile can attack at any side so it can attack from this side or from that one or it can attack from here that means it doesn't unlike the SN2 it doesn't have only one position where it can attack it doesn't attack backside to anything because now the leaving group has already left there is no leaving group and the compound now is planar or the carbon atom now with its uh, groups around it is planar so it will attack at any um, on any side so then once the nucleophile uh, attacks uh, it will uh, then give you the uh, the other intermediate if it's water the oxygen here will form this new bond remember if the nucleophile attack, depending on which side the nucleophile will attack, you will get different uh, arrangement of the groups uh, in space. So the and the second intermediate that is formed now, because we started off with a nucleophile that doesn't have a negative charge, we're going to have a positive charge on the oxygen of water. So this is unstable, of course, it needs to be stabilized. So in order to be stabilized, it must uh, then we undergo the third step, which is the deprotonation. So the oxygen must lose one hydrogen, where the electron moves from the bond toward the oxygen in order to um, to remove the positive charge. And the hydrogen will leave with the aid of the extra water in the media. So you will end up with your product, which is the tertiary butyl alcohol and the hydronium ion, which took the hydrogen from the um, oxygen. Looking at the energy profile of this reaction, it's a bit more complicated than the SN2. So we start off with our substrate, which is the tertiary butyl bromide. And then the slow step here is the start off with the breakdown of the bond between the uh, bromide and the carbon. So this bond will break first so at this point start to break this is very slow that needs a lot of energy there is a lot of activation energy here is needed and then what's once this bond is broken we will end up with the um, uh, with the carbocation that is formed and the, this carbocation must have some sort of stability in order to be formed so once the carbocation is formed, this is this is more stability than the initial breakdown break uh, down of the bond. Once the uh, bond is uh, once the carbocation is formed, then the uh, nucleophile start to make um, a bond. So at the um, nucleophile, which is water, start to make a bond again. It will be a slight increase in the energy at this stage. <coughs> This will be the, the beginning of formation of the bond needs some energy. Then once the bond is formed, the energy will be lost again and we will get this intermediate here that has lower energy than the beginning. And then we need to uh, have the protonation step. Again, the approach of water to break the bond here between the oxygen and hydrogen will need some activation energy, not very high though. And then once the final product, which is the tertiary alkyl alcohol, is formed, then and the um, uh, then the product will have much lower energy. So this is a product which is much lower energy than um, our uh, or our intermediates and lower energy than our start. So why would a certain alkyl halide undergo SN1 or SN2? When will SN1 be possible so when the uh, sn2 is very slow because the nucleophile cannot easily attack the um, the carbon or because it's very weak um, uh, then the uh, compound or the substrate can undergo SN, sn1 also if you have um, uh, 
carbon that was, will have a lot of branched uh, groups, then it will be very difficult for the nucleophile to attack. And then you're going to end up with a nucleophile that we will end up with a carbocation that is stabilized because we need the carbocation to be stabilized in order to be formed in the first step of the reaction. So stabilization of the carbocation formed is very important for SN1, for the unimolecular nucleophilic substitution. And as we were talking about uh, the uh, stability of uh, different carbocations from the first lecture when we talked about the Markovnikov rule for the uh, addition to the double bond, then we again um, recap that uh, where um, the more substituted the carbon, the more it's going to be stabilized. So this tertiary, um, tertiary uh, carbocation is more stabilized than the secondary, which is more stabilized than this primary and the methyl group. This is because of these methyl groups or these alkyl groups tend to push electrons away from them towards the carbon in the middle, which will then reduce the positive charge on the carbon in the middle. So it will be more stabilized. Any compounds uh, in order to be stabilized, we need to reduce the, um, the charge it has. So the more the charge it has, the less stable it becomes. <laughs> so when you have a tertiary alkyl halide, like the one we just covered before, the uh, tertiary alkyl, uh, tertiary uh, butyl bromide, <coughs> tertiary butyl bromide cannot undergo an SN2. It will only undergo an SN1 because now when you have um, something like an OH, it would be difficult for it to approach because we have a lot of groups around and also because the carbocation can be easily formed here and the carbocation will be stabilized. So the first step, which is the formation of the carbocation, will be will proceed uh, quicker than for an SN2 and it will then uh, can undergo the SN1 reaction. Stereochemistry of SN1 reaction, as we said, there will be racemization. We will end up with two products. So we said that SN2 is stereospecific. There will be inversion of configuration. For, um, SN, uh, for SN1, it's a different story because the carbocation that's formed is sp2 hybridized. So this carbocation is actually an sp2 hybridized. And then when you have your nucleophile it can attack from any side this one this one or from in between here that means that you will end up of all possible products with the stereochemistry so if you start with an r compound you will end up with a racemic mixture which is a mixture of an s and an r compounds it doesn't have to be 50 50 by the way can be in any percentage uh, based on which side will be easier for the nucleophile to attack. So always remember that when the carbocation is an sp2, the, uh, um, the carbocation will be planar and the nucleophile can approach from any side. So this is the difference between an SN2 and SN1. So SN2 is stereospecific, SN1 is not specific.